Okay. Today we are talking to Miranda Hodge. Now, before I say anything, I want you to tell us in your words who Miranda Hodge is. Miranda? <laughs> oh, that's challenging. No, it's not really. Okay. Um, so, hi, everyone. Hi, whoever's watching this. It's really exciting to be on here today. Um, I'm Miranda Hodge. I am a mum of three, I'm a wife, and I'm a singer, I'm lots of different things, but most of all online, online I am a parenting coach and a women's emotional wellbeing coach. Um, yeah, that's my name, that's what I do. So tell us, what does a women's wellbeing coach do? Yep. So what a women's wellbeing coach does is I've been doing it in my parenting role as well because obviously women I talk to mums all the time so I talk, I'm talking to a, <clears throat> excuse me to women all the time. So basically what I do is help people work out what it, what they are how do you explain it what they are actually showing to the world in my in par, in in a parent's case what they're showing to their child what they're taught saying what they're um, putting out there, what sort of vibe they're giving to their children, um, what yeah, what they're saying, how they're interacting. When it comes from a parenting perspective, obviously how they're controlling their children and managing their children. Um, and as just from a woman's perspective, friendships, social interactions, the sort of things that you're bringing forward at work, how you're interacting with the world, basically, and whether or not that's from your best you. Okay, so one of the things that I've talked to lots of parents about is the fact that when we were parented, it was totally different to what we're now parenting our children with. And there's a huge gap in between that. So that's some of the stuff that I've been able to talk to people about, being, being able to help people with. Um, yeah, so anything to do with well-being, which means physical well-being, but it also means emotional well-being, understanding. I'm being triggered by all of these things. <laughs> what is going on? Why do I get so angry when someone cuts me off? Why do I have road rage? That's a really silly example. But why am I yelling at my children in this situation? Why can't I stand it when, you know, when my friends don't text me back straight away? Those sorts of things, yeah, are what I talk about with it when it comes to emotional well-being. And it talks about different types of, we talk about different types of attachment, um, what's been going on for you, what was it like when you were, chi were a child, and why these different triggers come up. So that's just some of the stuff that we do. Well, you mentioned you mentioned before you mentioned changes. What are the what are some of the biggest changes you've seen? Um, from when you're talking about that, you mean from when I was a child and now yeah, yeah. what we're parenting. Um, so one of the biggest changes is um, whether or not you can discipline in public. That's a really huge one. Um, the second one that I would say is really massive is um, the judgment. So there's always been people that judge other people, but now with the with the rise of the internet and all that stuff, I say sounding like a really old person, but the rise of the internet and those things mean that everyone thinks they're an expert in everything. And that includes the way you should parent your child. So you've got people who are not really experts who have parented their own kids, which is great. Of course, there comes an, a level of experience with that, which I obviously have as well from parenting my own children. Okay, but there's not, there's a lot of people out there who think they know what other parents should do and don't know how to stand back and just let them parent themselves. And so that's been a really huge transition, I would say. But also a lot of people's parents, when I was a child, were starting to become a lot more permissive. So in the parenting styles, permissive basically means that you let your children do more and you're not so strict with them. So that was half of the people that I knew when I was a child, that was happening for them. So they were becoming more permissive with their children. But that means now that people who were permissively parented and want to be able to have a bit more structure around what their child does and have more connection with their child and not have their child feel, you know, left out or feel not loved maybe like they felt because their parent was more permissive. That means they've then got to try and work out the, um, the structures and routines and all and expectations from when I was a child to try and put that in place now is can be really really hard so yeah there's some of the differences how did you come to being in that space that you're in with regards yep. to coaching yeah sure yeah so my background is teaching i'm a teacher i'm a relief teacher 
we were just talking about that before. Um, I love teaching. I love um, creating that rapport with people. And I have always been, I thought about this a while ago, I've always been someone, a safe person that people have come to with their problems or with their relationship stuff that they want to sort out or talking to their, how to talk to their parents around things, coming up with the words to say to other people. Um, yeah, all of those sorts of things. And when I became a parent myself, my big aha, my big why moment when it comes to parent coaching was going, you know what, my eldest child is not doing what I want her to do when she's two and I have no idea what I'm doing. And I had to really go through that and work out, well, how am I going to be a parent that, you know, I can be proud of, a parent that I can help my child grow up properly and be someone that I'm proud of and that she can be proud of herself, basically with the right self-discipline and all these other things without parenting with fear. So that was something I really had to, we, we and obviously we still are <laughs> working that out as our kids get older, mm. but it was a really huge moment for me to go, wow. And so I'm someone who's worked in childcare, worked with babies for my whole life. I'm now a teacher, you know, trained teacher. I'm trained in children development and learning and, you know, I work with them regularly. And here I am struggling with a two-year-old. So what about all the people that don't have all of that training in children and they're still struggling with their two-year-old and they're listening to the world out there saying, you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. Too hard. So, yeah, so I suppose I just wanted to fill some sort of niche out there to say, you know what, it's okay. There's people around who can actually help you. And we don't know everything, of course, but there are lots of tried and true strategies that we've, I've been able to share with parents that have been really, really helpful for them. So, yeah, it's been a great space to be in. Mm. Do you find there's anything particularly unique about what you do? Um, Unique. Oh, so there's lots of unique things. <laughs> I seem to meet people and find something new in myself all the time that's unique. So um, one of the things that is unique about it is that I, I really love to bring a sense of empathy. So people can really feel, as I said before, that judgment and that what are you going to do and, you know, you're doing it wrong, those sorts of things to whatever they're doing. And this is parenting or um, the emotional well-being. Like you're doing it right, you're doing it wrong. You've got to do it my way or else. One of the things that I really pride myself on bringing is empathy and the safety to talk about different ways that you want to try things. So go, you know what, how, how do you want to work this out? This is not me saying you must do my method of ABC. This is me going, here's an idea. I tried it with my kids or I've tried it with kids in the classroom or whatever it is. And then if you want to try that method, great. If you don't want to, that's fine. Let's find another one that's going to work for you and your family. So that's something that I really love to bring yeah yeah and what's your connection to geelong did geelong choose you or did you choose geelong um i think it's a bit of both <laughs> yep so i basically moved down here so many of the people watching are going to know that i'm a christian so i moved down here to do a bible study course when i was 18 and i really you know i really love that i'm open about that but i'm not trying to bible bash anybody just for the record Anyway, um, I moved down here to do that basically and then met my husband and all those sorts of things. But I actually love Geelong. I would I would like to think I would have moved to Geelong anyway because I really love it around here. We're in Leopold, not Geelong, you know, central. But um, I really love being part of the Surf Coast area and the, the Ballerine and the Geelong. It's really, really beautiful place to be. And I love raising my kids here. We go to the beach. I just love it. It's just a great space to be. And tell me about a great client experience you've had and what it, what you learned from it. Okay, um, this is really interesting. So I always say I'm, I work with women, primarily work with women, but a lot of the time when I'm doing parent coaching, the mum and the dad or the partners often come on the call together. And so it's been amazing to see the differences in, definitely in the women, but in couples and in the fathers in particular, when they come and talk to me, especially around the emotional things. So a bit of background, one of the things that I talk a lot about and I've talked probably mostly about is emotions when it comes to how to um, manage emotions in your small child. So your child having tantrums, that sort of stuff. That's what I've focused a lot of my work on. And I've got an online course called the Emotionally Equipped Child. And basically um, parents have joined into that. So when I've spoken to um, the couples, one of the biggest things that I've found is number one, fathers and often mothers as well go, we were never taught any of this stuff when we were kids. We never had any of the, you know, give your child a safe space to have their emotions, but still lead them in that and teach them what to do. You know, give them a, um, 
uh, list of what they can possibly do to get out of that really emotional state once they've calmed a little bit or you know just it's been amazing to see the response that I've had especially from the dads and that's why I mentioned it because they're like wow we were just told you know just don't, boys don't cry and all this sort of thing and it's been really they've actually many people have walked away and gone we've learned stuff for ourselves we've actually learned stuff for ourselves out of this and that got me going even more than working with parents regarding their kids and that's why I've talked you know started morphing into an emotional well-being coach because I was doing that anyway yeah there sounds like sounds like there's a little bit of um couples counseling in there as well, sort of mixed, <laughs> potentially mixed in with, yeah, yeah. Mixed in with all that yeah what are, what are your future plans for your business well I have so many future plans and it's just <laughs> Everyone who knows me knows I've always got a thousand ideas, but my um, my goal is to not have so many ideas that I run with. But basically, I love running group sessions. So I'm a teacher by teacher at heart, teacher by trade, and I just love being in a space with people where we're really chewing the fat about what's going on here, what's happening, you know, what is going on in your emotions that's going to cause this trigger, and what actually is happening here, and how can I help? You know, how can we come up with a suggestion to help? you parent your child better or whatever. Um, I really love those group sessions. So I'm definitely doing more of them this year. Yep. So excited about them. And I'm going to be doing some more from the women's emotional wellbeing um, space as well. So I'm looking to combine, not combine them, but to do some um, alongside each other. Um, the other thing that I really, I'm really excited about that I've already started doing, um, I'm doing trauma informed um, coaching certification. So that's helping me see things from the central nervous system and body point of view. So going, here's your emotional thing from when you're a child or, you know, from back in your story. Here's where all of that trauma is still stored in your body, still stored in your central nervous system. And how are we going to get that out now? How are we going to work through that? Because the body side of it is, I feel like, and I've heard lots of people say, but I feel like is really the missing link because we can think as much as we want, but stuff's actually stored in our body as well. Ooh. Yeah, so that's really exciting. And as a Christian, I'm going to be working working with Christian women on that, but mm -hmm. also working with other women as well because I mm -hmm. feel like it's really important and really exciting. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm going. So, any advice for up and coming business owners? Um, yes. <laughs> um, don't expect everything to happen in a hurry. Yeah. Yep, because it's taken a long time for me to build my business, especially. And I have to add a bit of a caveat. If you're a parent and you're, I've been a parent and we had COVID, of course, for two of those years. So I was at home with the kids for, you know, years and years to, by myself or, you know, by ourselves. Um, building a business around your family, for me, I wasn't prepared to make the sacrifice of my family for that business. So for me, my building my business has taken longer, but building my family is very worthwhile as I'm sure everyone watching this will agree mm. so for me be, having the clarity to go you know what what's happening in my business is important but I've been blessed enough really to be able to just go you know what I have to do what I do I have to look after my own children first mm. and now that they're a little bit older I can start to go you know what now I can focus a little bit more on my business and on building the things that I want because at the end of the day my business is not going to be you know looking after me on my deathbed it's going to be my children hopefully so that's the sort of thing that I've tried to keep in mind the whole time so don't give up everything for your business basically and the second thing is um, believe in yourself because you actually have way more going on if you want to start a business you've got way more going on in here in your heart and in your brain than you actually think you do yep yeah fantastic advice that's really yeah. good advice um, I often have people saying to me with regards to any sort of communication mm. they'll say to me oh i don't contribute because i have nothing to say or i don't have any, any advice to give and i said well you've got life advice you've got your own unique experiences yep so any sort of thing that we can bring from our life experience is just as important i think mm. we yep. don't have to categorize business and life because with the small business owner they're basically intermixed so yeah. mm. they're not they can't be as you said they can't be treated as separate and you've got to you've got to put your family and your loved ones first always i think and your health of course yeah. oh that's right of course yep 
Now, tell us how people can get in touch with you. Yep. Okay. So I'm in the midst of, uh, I've been build, rebuilding my website. So at the moment, I've got both everything I do in one website now, which is really, really helpful. It's called the Cherish Mums Base Coaching dot org. Yep. We'll and put it's all the same. information in the comments yeah. section. Yeah, beautiful. That's a good idea because yeah, yeah. it's, it's a bit long. Um, also, <laughs> I'm on Instagram. I've got two different accounts there for the two different sections because some people aren't parents and don't want the parenting stuff when it comes to women's emotional well-being. So I've got at the Cherish Mum Space Coaching on Instagram, which is the same as my website. Um, and I've got at Mrs. Miranda Hodge because that's what I'm known as at school. Mrs. Miranda Hodge, that's me. So, okay. yeah, that's just and made it easy. And if, if, if they're a bit lost, they can contact you direct too, can they? Definitely, yeah, they can contact me direct. Um, they can also, like on Facebook, on Miranda Hodge on Facebook, yeah. Miranda yeah. Renee Hodge. I'll be linked in this anyway. So, yeah. yep, you can contact me however you can find it. And right. if you ring me, leave a message because I keep getting spam yeah. calls and I'm not answering. Yeah, we all get those. <laughs> Everyone they're gets those. Yeah, they're a nuisance. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us. It's been wonderful yeah. hearing about what you're doing, Miranda. And, um, Thank you. Good luck with all your, your um, future endeavours and your goals for the coming years. And yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Well, oh, thanks so much for thank having you. me, Matthew. It's been lovely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. See ya.